Okay, well, again, my name is Tiffany Alford, and I am actually an instructional lab technician at Fayetteville Tech Community College. Some of you may have seen me a few times at other ISSA meetings. Um, when Carlos asked me to speak with you guys about some of my experience at Fayetteville Tech and Red Hat, I thought it might be fun to share my experience in the form of lessons learned. So before I begin, um, I just want to start by stating a disclaimer that all views expressed in this presentation belong to Tiffany Alford, unless otherwise stated, and do not represent the opinions of any entity in which she has been, is currently, or will be affiliated. So I'll start off with a little bit of a background information. Um, like most college students, I didn't know what I wanted to do after graduating high school. So I chose business. Um, at 17, I can remember my mother suggesting to major in something in computers. She said, you're really good at it. I scuffed at the idea. Just because I could install a few updates on our home computer didn't mean I was good at computers. But let's bookmark this for a moment right now. I graduated at UNC Pembroke with a master's in business administration and a minor in computer science. But let's just say that the discrete structures class I had to take traumatized me from pursuing anything computer related for a very long time. Fast forward to the next 10 years. During this time, I served many roles in higher education. I was a recruiter, uh, worked in admissions, registration, advising, counseling, program coordination, everything except for financial aid. I found great joy in working in higher education. It was always rewarding watching the same students that I recruited and advised walk across the stage at graduation. I love helping my students achieve their dreams. Inspiring students, inspiring people is one of the best gifts that I have to offer. The only problem with the positions that I was currently in is that they were grant funded. And as many of you know, grant jobs offer great experience and a nice salary, but anything beyond your contracted time of service is never guaranteed. So every three years, I hop from one grant to another, inspiring one group of students before moving on to the next. Throughout my time um, of grant hopping, I was also doing other things such as freelance illustrating. Art is another one of my passions. So. I actually illustrated two published children's books. And in the meantime, I was also occasionally pestering my older cousin about computer stuff. You see right now, he's currently a director of information technology for the company that he works for. So back then I always went to him whenever I was troubleshooting my computer. He would always make sure that every computer session with me was a teachable moment. Remembering my fear of computer science, I did not entertain the thought of going into the IT field. Little did I know that his subtle nudges of encouragement would take root later. So after a while, I started to feel stuck with really no room to truly grow. I couldn't advance in higher education without going back to school for another four years. After a year of unemployment, I was hired as a case worker for DSS. I love servicing people, but I felt like something was missing. I was at a crossroads in my life. I decided to sit down and really evaluate my life. Could I continue down this path of servitude, even with the nagging feeling that something was missing in my career? Now, I would highly recommend the book, What Color Is Your Parachute? For anyone who is considering or is in the currently in the process of changing careers, reading this book helped me to be honest with myself about my knowledge, skills, and abilities in a very reflective way. Now, on the right side of the slide, you'll see a heart with words, and it's, it's pretty much a broad representation of my skills, my talents, and the passions that really make up who I am. Now, a lot of this stuff I already knew about myself. But there were other things that I never even considered, like information technology. 
It was then when the words of my mother spoke to me nearly 20 years ago rang into my ears. You might, you maybe you should measure in something in computers. You're really good at it. So this leads me to the first lesson I learned. Do not dismiss wise counsel. Wise counsel is anyone in your life whose advice or wisdom you trust. Maybe your wise counsel wasn't a parent or a mentor. Maybe it was just that gut feeling that you were just too afraid to listen to. For me, it was my mom. And let's just say that my mother's wisdom has been tried and true through and through over the years. And had I taken her wisdom to heart, I probably would have been at this point in my life a lot sooner. Which leads me to my second lesson learned. Don't waste your time on the should have, could haves, and would haves. Whatever point in your life you choose to make a career change, do it. As long as you're living, it's never too late. So in 2018, was the start of my journey towards changing my career to, to information technology. Now, what I learned in 2018 that I didn't know as a 17-year-old college student was that computer science was not the umbrella of in information technology like I thought it was. This leads me to yet another lesson. Before doing any type of career change, you should always do your research. Some people like to jump onto the IT bandwagon because it's trending and it's the popular career right now. With so many facets of IT to choose from, you can't just go to a college and say, I wanna learn IT stuff. No, you have to do your homework. Do you wanna learn more about how com computers connect and communicate with one another? Then maybe networking is your thing. Have you ever wondered how companies protect your digital information? Try cybersecurity. Are you interested in creating a software program? Then programming may be right up your alley. Or maybe you have an artistic flair. Then you might want to give web design or user interface a try. Now, I'm not saying you're going to know exactly what you want to do when you go into IT, but at least have some idea what's out there. Also, consider the salary, location of the jobs, and what companies are hiring. My research included speaking with faculty at Fayetteville Tech's computer and IT department, talking with family and friends who were already in the industry to find out the pros and cons. And it never hurts to just do a simple Google search. I decided that I wanted to pursue cybersecurity. After a self-evaluation and doing a career research, I took that leap of faith and I resigned from DSS and enrolled at Fayetteville Tech Community College during the fall of 2018. You see, I had this game plan. I was gonna take classes at Fayetteville Tech, pass the Network Plus exam, pass the Security Plus exam, and get a job at Fort Bragg. And I was gonna count that as a success. I remember being in one of my cybersecurity classes and being completely lost on the subject of cryptography. As the instructor lectured, I looked around the classroom. The majority of the students were white males who were silently typing at their computers. Any comments they made only further displayed their knowledge on the subject matter. There were only two other females in my class. I was the only black female. Someone else in my position may have felt intimidated, afraid to ask questions for fear of looking dumb or being ridiculed by other students. This leads me to lesson number four. Do not be afraid to ask questions. There's a Confucius quote that says, a man who asks a question is, oh, is a fool for a minute, but a man who does not ask a question is a fool for life. I can tell you right now that I am no one's fool. So I raise my hand and I ask my cryptography question. My instructor answered my question to the best of his ability, and he asked if I understood. I shook my head no. He tried explaining it again and asked if I understood it on this time. My answer was still no. By the time we came to that third time, I told him I would just let it marinate and so I wouldn't hold up the whole class period. 
by the now by now I know you're probably thinking I maybe I should have never even asked the question to begin with. Well, the next class period, that same instructor showed me a video that visually explained the concept of cryptography. And you know what? It finally clicked. So I'd like to take I'd like to take just a moment to give a huge shout out and a thanks to Mr. Sykes for his patience in answering my many questions in his classes. And one day after, um, after that class, another student came to me and they said, I'm glad you said something because I didn't understand either. So every time I had a question in any of my classes, no matter how dumb I thought it would sound, I asked anyway. The next lesson I'd like to share with you is to build your network. It is never too early to start connecting with individuals who are either going in the same direction as you or who have already traveled the same path that you're traveling. My first semester at Fayetteville Tech, I attended my first ISSA meeting where I met Nia Lucky. She encouraged me to volunteer at the InfoSec conference in Raleigh. Now, even though I was only volunteering to assist presenters, I took advantage of the opportunity and I decided to make my own networking cards. I had a blast volunteering at the conference, even though half the things that were discussed were well over my head at the time, the exposure was priceless. I met great people there. I made sure to have meaningful conversations as I gave my networking card to various company representatives. A couple of days later, after the conference, I received a phone call from a young woman that I remember who remembered the meaningful conversation I had with her. She worked for an IT company in Raleigh and told me her CEO wanted to hire me for a position. This leads me to lesson number six. Don't be surprised by the results of a positive attitude. I went to that conference armed with confidence, networking cards, and a positive mindset. Yet, I was still surprised when I got that call from the CEO. If you put in the effort, why should you expect anything less than a positive result? Now, granted, it was not an IT position. The position was actually related to my grant management experience. But nothing just happens. Even if this position wasn't going to give me the IT experience that I wanted, I kept a positive attitude. After all, I was still working for an IT company, so I felt like this was a step in the right direction. So for the next three months, I worked as a project advisor for an IT company while going to school and studying for my Network Plus certification. The job was demanding, but I gave it 200%. I was professional, had good work ethics, and I was dependable. For lesson number six, you always leave a good impression, even if it's not the job you want. Due to the heavy workload of my upcoming school semester, I had to resign from the position. I left such an impression on the CEO that he told me he wanted to invest in my future in IT. After resigning from the company, the CEO paid me for two months worth of my salary. So leaving a good impression paid off, literally. By the time I started my second semester of classes, I had a pretty steady routine of showing up for class early, asking questions, and sometimes staying after class to do extra assignments or work ahead. There was an assignment, there was an announcement about an instructional lab technician position on campus, so I applied for it. I didn't think any more about the job, I finished my first academic year, and that summer, I received a phone call from Mr. Herring, the department chair of the System and Security Analysis Program. He asked me if I was interested in the position. I said yes, and that's how I started working as a lab tech. The next lesson learned is to work hard even when no one is watching. Anybody can be a model student or employee when people are watching, but if you're not putting in the work behind the scenes, then your stage work for the audience is in vain. 
and eventually people will see right through it. I will even go as far to say, don't just work hard when no one is looking, but also be professional, be on time, be honest and be kind when you think no one is watching. Because sometimes people are watching and you don't even know it. Now, I could be wrong, but I think Mr. Herring was watching my work ethic as a student when I thought no one was looking. So now I'm a student and a lab tech for Fayetteville Tech. Last fall, Mr. Herring made an announcement in class encouraging students to apply for the Student Ambassador Program through their partnership with the IT company, Red Hat. I didn't think much of the announcement. I had only taken one Linux class because it was required for my certificate program. The next day in class, Mr. Herring asked, Ms. Alford, have you applied for the student ambassador yet? No, I answered honestly. Make sure you apply. I didn't understand the look of expectancy on his face, but I took the flyer from him anyway. That evening when I got home, I stared at the flyer requirements. On top of the requirements, I also had to do a presentation and write an essay as well. The essay topic was why do you believe you have why do you why do you believe you would make a successful Red Hat Academy student ambassador? Now, I know I met at least 80% of the qualifications, but could I really do this? I mean, I was already working as a lab tech. I was studying to uh, take my Network Plus exam in November, and it was already September. And plus, I was scheduled for three more classes the following semester and scheduled to take the Security Plus exam. What if I couldn't do the things Red Hat expected me to do? What if I failed the Network Plus and Security Plus exams? And why would Red Hat select me? Surely, they didn't want a 34-year-old career changer who knew hardly anything about Red Hat. I was willing to learn, but would that even matter when they could easily have gotten a 25-year-old computer whiz instead? Before I could spiral too deeply, a small thought came to my mind. Why not me? Instead of focusing on why they wouldn't pick someone like me, I started focusing on why they should pick someone like me. This leads me to lesson number eight. Stop blocking your doors of opportunity. When we doubt our skills and our capabilities, we become our own worst enemy. I had to remind myself of my networking card quote, my determination to succeed is greater than my fear of failure. So I applied for the Red Hat Academy Student Ambassador. And when I did my interview and presentation, I gave them every reason why I would make a successful student ambassador. Two days later, I received an email congratulating me as Fayetteville Tech's first Red Hat Academy student ambassador. The Red Hat Academy gave me an opportunity to shine in ways that I wouldn't have sought out on my own. I coordinated a Red Hat Expo on campus to help educate students on the world of Red Hat. I even designed a flyer for the event that you can see in the upper left-hand corner of the slide. When campus closed due to the COVID-19, I promoted a virtual student watch party for the annual Red Hat Summit. I had access to free virtual classes on Ansible, OpenShift, and Kubernetes, and also a free voucher for the Red Hat Certified System Administrator exam. I was exposed to a whole new world of open source scripting and automation, and I was loving it. But what I loved even more was sharing this knowledge with my classmates. I mentioned resources that Red Hat provided me, but Fayetteville Tech also provided me with some pretty hefty resources as well. Being in partnership with IT companies like Palo Alto, Red Hat, and Cisco, helps Fayetteville Tech offer resources such as supplemental labs and discounted exam vouchers. Mr. Derby, a cybersecurity instructor at Fayetteville Tech, told me about a resource offered through the military. If you are active duty or a veteran, please go to the library at Fort Bragg. 
sign up for a library account to access their free online resources. My dad is a veteran, so I was able to gain access to a ton of free courses, books, and exam preparations. Also, if you go to Fayetteville Tech's website under the Cyber Defense Education Center, you'll find conference, conferences, competitions, scholarships, and job opportunities. I took a screenshot of some of the current news and events of the page. And even with all of the resources, the time, there were still times when I felt like I wasn't grasping the concepts or quick, uh, con I wasn't grasping the concepts of IT as quickly or as easily as my peers, especially as I was studying for the Security Plus exam. I was growing frustrated with myself and wondered if I would ever understand subnetting. Would I ever memorize the port numbers? And would I ever know the difference between Radius and TACTX Plus? The only person, and well, um, but you know, as I'm thinking about these things, I, it brought me to lesson number nine, to be patient with myself. And the only person you really should be competing with is yourself. You should strive to be smarter and better than you were yesterday. Even if you only memorize one port number, that's one more port number that you know today that you didn't know yesterday. The funny thing is the same material that I was struggling to understand five months ago, it makes perfect sense now. I was finding that many of my classmates rarely took advantage of the resources available to them, preferring to rush through assignments and rely on natural know-how and talent. Now, I know I wasn't as technically skilled as some of the students in my class, but Lord knows I worked hard. I took advantage of every resource I could get my hands on. This leads me to lesson number 10. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Talent can be a dime a dozen. There are plenty of people out there who get by on talent alone, who are technically inclined, but don't perceive the need for soft skills or good work ethics. But the people who may not necessarily have natural born talent, who may not be the smartest in the room or the most skilled at the table, those are the ones you need to keep an eye on. Because while everyone else is staring in awe at the talented ones, it's the hardworking ones in the background that will quietly and subtly excel beyond everyone's expectations. Because not only have these individuals outworked the talented ones, but they have also built up their own unique set of skills. I wasn't necessarily the most talented in the field of IT, but I worked hard and strategically, and it paid off. I earned both Network Plus and Security Plus certifications within eight months. I was rewarded recently Red Hat Academy Student Ambassador for the year of 2020. I'm drawing pretty close to the end of my presentation. So I have two more lessons that I'd like to share with you. Lesson number 11 is to pay it forward. I did not get to this milestone in my career change by myself. I had great mentors and people in my life like Nia Lucky, Mr. Herring, and Mr. Carter at Fayetteville Tech. A world of support from my family and friends. How could I not pay it forward? Now, when I say pay it forward, it doesn't have to be some grand and spectacular gesture. Paying it forward means helping a fellow classmate or colleague who may be struggling in a subject that you excel in. Offer your knowledge and advice in a study group. Join an online IT forum. Share your experiences so others don't make the same mistakes you've made. Also, you could mentor, some, mentor someone. Last but not least, lesson number 12, God laughs at the plans of men. Now, this is just what I have found be, to be true in my life. A lot of times the plans that we have for our lives are so much smaller than the plans God has for us. 
I came into this career change with only the mindset to earn two certifications and get a job. But God saw my plans, laughed at them, and showed me something even bigger. In other words, don't be so set on a single-minded path that you miss out on the opportunity to turn the opportunities that are all around you because it's not in your plan. I think back on all the things I would have missed had I not deviated from my original plan. This isn't the end of my IT journey. It's only the beginning. My final words for you this evening is a prayer that you will work hard, have faith, and watch God open doors you never imagined you'd walk through. So thank you guys so much for um, you know, allowing me to share my experiences and this concludes my presentation. So if there are any questions, um, please feel free to ask. You can also reach me by email and on LinkedIn. Clap, but there's no clap button. I'm sorry. I said I would clap, but there's no clap button. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I it was a it was actually an honor to be asked to speak. You know, um, I don't have a whole lot to share, but you know, I hope it's helpful to someone. So I have a curiosity. What do you do as one of the people working in the lab? What kind of I guess maybe like daily duties or what does the day look like for you? Now, for me, um, I'm sorry, I am trying to bring back my video and let's see, I'm gonna stop sharing and, uh, okay, there we go. Um, okay, yes, to answer your question, as far as um, a lab technician um, now be, now this is like pre-COVID-19, but, uh, what I generally did was actually um, during the class periods that we have at Fayetteville Tech, I would actually kind of sit in and the same way you would have like a, a teacher's assistant in a class. So while the instructor is teaching, um, I would be in the class. So if students had uh, questions about their uh, lab assignments or, uh, you know, some technical difficulties, I would be there to kind of help them kind of walk through it. A lot of times I try and um, try and make it a teachable moment. I don't like to just point at the screen and just tell students, click there, click there. But um, I definitely try to encourage them to critically think like, okay, if that didn't work, let's go back and see what, what the problem may have been, you know, especially with um, some of the Red Hat classes that I've sat in. Um, there have been times where I've actually been a student in the class and I've also, um, you know, assisted students as well that were in my class. But um, with Red Hat, especially when you're you're doing the Santax, it is so easy for students to get frustrated. And, you know, they're like, I can't figure it out. I've done everything. This lab is just broken. It's, it's not working. It's a mistake. And, you know, you can see the mistake. You see that, oh, they forgot to put, you know, you know, this period there, they forgot to put, you know, something at the end of their syntax. Um, and so you you try and kind of talk them down from that edge of frustration and uh, kind of help them to think. It's like, okay, if you need to walk away for a minute, walk away, but come back. Cause I'm not gonna, you know, just tell you the answer. We're gonna figure it out together. I'm gonna help you figure it out. We're gonna, you know, take baby steps and walk back through and see what you did wrong. And a lot of times it's like that, you know, hit yourself in the forehead type of deal. Cause once they, you know, kind of calm down from that frustration and um, take a look at the screen and it's like, oh, I've been sitting here for 30 minutes and you tell me this was the mistake. So, um, but yeah, that's generally the, um, what I end up doing is, you know, helping students. There have been times I've also um, substituted as far as when an instructor is not able to, um, facilitate a study group or a tutoring session. I have sat in and um, assisted with tutoring for secu uh, Security Plus. 
So that's kind of in a nutshell. So it, it does give me experience. Um, I also do, uh, I have also done virtualizations for um, the different programs that we have on in our computer lab. So whether it's installing um, uh, uh, CentOS on, on there, Fedora, or uh, a version of Windows, you know, server, making sure that those programs are um, virtualized on those computers. So that's kind of in a nutshell what I do and some kind of some odds and odd, odd and end things that instructors may ask, ask of me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Mr. Carter, he chimed in and said, I also do um, lab proofing. That's kind of what I've been doing. Um, I was doing it before COVID, um, but once, uh, you know, I've been, I'm working remotely now. So what I'll do is kind of go through a lot of the labs, like so Palo Alto, those labs and um, Red Hat, just to give an example, um, they are planning, they're currently in the process of doing um, uh, Ansible labs for Red Hat. And there were some serious uh, mistakes within the student workbook. The syntax was completely wrong on it. So I actually had to contact Red Hat um, through their community uh, uh, website and, and try and you know tell them about the issue that we were having because of the misprint. And it was all throughout the book. And I'm like, I can see a student now trying to work out this problem and getting completely frustrated by it. Um, so, you know, they were aware of it. So even though they couldn't fix it quickly, um, my job is to actually make notations of errors like that. So the instructor is aware and um, also um, not only making them aware of the issue, but if there's an, uh, a solution on how to fix that issue, providing them with that solution. So that way, whenever they're teaching the class, it's less stress for the instructor and also for the students. I see Sheena's comment. Um, I'm so glad you could make it, Sheena. But uh, yeah, I, I think you're you, you're probably giving me a little bit too much credit. But um, yeah, Sheena, I I love helping students. You know, my peers. And I say students because I'm I'm kind of also I work there, but I'm also a student there. So you know, I you know I treat them on the same level, even though I'm I'm a, a lab technician there. So. I look at where we're all in this together. So what one person knows, you know, they share it. And if I know something um, that's going to be helpful to my my fellow classmates, I mean, I'm, I'm going to make sure I pay it forward and make sure that they're just as, as successful. Because I look at sometimes it's easy to get that crab in the barrel um, type mentality where you don't want, you know, you're so busy on your path to success that you're pulling everybody else down and keeping them from succeeding. But I, I feel like we should be a ladder one for another. And when somebody makes it to the top, you know, you should be reaching your hand back to pull somebody else up with you. So did anyone uh, else have any? Uh, of course we got more questions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're inquisitive people. Uh, tell us about <laughs> what you do as far as uh, being a Red Hat ambassador and uh, how that connects to what you, you're doing for your career path. Okay, so um, now with the Red Hat ambassador program, um, what it is is it's actually like a, they're trying to bridge the gap um, between industry and education. So what better way to do that is to have a student ambassador where initially what I'm doing is um, I'm receiving a lot of resources from Red Hat, such as you know the um, OpenShift virtual classes and um, an Ansible and Kubernetes things of that nature, and you know just pretty much getting the students excited about it. Um, like with the whole Red Hat Expo, um, you know my I was looking at it from a student's point of view because like I said when I applied. I knew very little about Red Hat, and I knew a lot of my classmates, they were just, they were kind of like me. They were just taking the class because it was required. It's like, well, I'm in networking, I'm in security, I got to take this class, so I'm just going to take it. But they didn't really understand or know what all Red Hat entailed. 
And I didn't either. When, until I start, when I got the position, I started doing more research. And I'm like, whoa, you know, there are some things I just didn't know. Like, I didn't know that, you know, how they say um, the Dunkin' Donuts slogan, everything runs on Dunkin'. It's like, you know, everything runs on Linux. It's so many things that runs on, uh, you know, Linux technology, Red Hat technology. It just blows your mind. Companies, um, big companies like Netflix, um, DreamWorks, they're using um, these technologies. So I'm like, do students know this? You know, I, I want to share this with students. And, you know, I wanted to make sure that we were able to bring out uh, technical representatives from Red Hat so that they can share this information with our students. Um, so that the main thing with being an ambassador is you're to have that excitement. And I, and I really, I learned, I kind of, as I did my research on Red Hat, my excitement grew and I wanted to share it. So, you know, making sure to have those, um, that initial Red Hat Expo to get students excited about it. Um, you know, because like I said, they didn't know the ins and outs of it. So, you know, once uh, representatives came down to speak on it, we had like a buzz of excitement. Then everybody was like, well, Tiffany, how, you know, what what else, what other technologies are out there with Red Hat? What's the new and upcoming? They, they were so eager and excited about it. Um, and, you know, we had a 650% increase in students who purchased Red Hat exam vouchers because of that Red Hat Expo. So, um, you know, promoting that in the colleges, because, you know, bringing that technology and that excitement to students in the colleges, um, that actually, you know, it, it makes stu uh, students uh, more apt to test for the Red Hat certifications. And when they have those certs, you know, that's, I feel like Red Hat is a niche in and of itself. You know, you hear a lot about get a, you know, Security Plus certification, get a Network Plus. You know, you hear about that, but, you know, Red Hat, you know, it's pretty out, you know, when you look at some of the job descriptions, it's, um, it's kind of like a rare thing to see. So when you see it, it's like employers want to grab at it. So sharing that opportunity with students and letting them see the importance of it because there is a niche for it and there is a market for um, Linux administrators and you know automation administrators um, that I think it's, it was beneficial. So doing that and also um, the communication works both ways. So whereas I was passing along information from Red Hat to students and promoting it, I was also passing along feedback from students to Red Hat. So, you know, even when I was doing the whole Red Hat Expo, I went to students first and I said, hey, what do you want to know about Red Hat? Because I, what I didn't want to do is do a force fed presentation, um, you know, to students on stuff they're really not, they don't care to know about. And they got down to the nitty gritty, you know, at the Expo, they were like, um, how can I get a job at Red Hat? So, you know, they were very enthused about it. So um, also offering that feedback from faculty as well as students back to Red Hat on what, what's not working and what is working. Oh, so, okay. So Carlos is asking, so when can we schedule a weekend Red Hat hands-on tutorial? Ah, um, I will, so um, I will, um, I'll get back with you on that. I'll definitely get back with you on that. If, if people are interested, then um, yeah, we'll, we'll go for it. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, Mark. Ha <laughs> ha. I, I only have two. I only have two. <laughs> I'm working on Red Hat. I am currently studying for, um, the Red Hat Certified System in Men. Um, yeah, right. we could they can use, use CentOS. So mm -hmm. CentOS is compatible to it. So right, it, it's please. really, mm -hmm, it really is. Um, it's actually the foundation. You know, that's where. Red Hat or, you know, rail as they call it, comes from. It came from a, the community actually kind of, what do you call it, upstream, you know, from CentOS. And then that paid version of Red Hat is actually that support that you're getting. 
So yeah, I'll get up with you on that uh, weekend hands-on training. Okay, okay. So I hope I've asked, uh, answered everybody's questions and I hopefully haven't bored anybody, but uh, 